If you got your eyes on a leadership role or buffing up your resume for an opportunity, here's some of my best tips for you to increase your chances of getting that position that you want. And keeping everything simple, let's jump right in. Now, if you take nothing else away from this video, here is the single most important thing that you can do to improve your chances. Ask your boss. See, you may already be a candidate in your boss or lead's mind, but by asking, you are showing initiative that you are going out of your way because this is something that you really want, it's something that you're aiming for, and by asking them, you are putting yourself in a much stronger position to be considered for these roles and these opportunities. And it really is as simple as, Hey boss, so I really would like to apply for that management position, or I really would like to be able to like start working towards developing into being a leader. What? Why? You took the words right out of my mouth. I, I have to let you know. Okay, before you say anything else, where did the accent come from? Are you, are you gonna let me finish or... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Wow, you were already considered to be a leader in my eyes, but by taking that time to ask me, I can guarantee I'll help you get to it. Awesome. Thanks. The next tip is a phrase that I like to call keeping the receipts. So now that you've talked to your boss or your lead, there's likely extra projects or extra responsibilities that are coming your way. The best thing that you can do, write it all down. If you're working on an extra project, write the project down. If you're coming in early and doing extra work to get everyone else suited for the day, write it down. If there's an event or situation that happens and you are a key player in making sure it goes well, write it down. The importance of keeping the receipts, writing down your work, detailing your successes and detailing your progress is this gives you a catalog to draw from of experiences, examples that you have done that you have accomplished. And not to mention when you're doing check-ins with your boss, you can also look back and work together and say, this is something that's happened. Here's something that I think went well. Where do you think I could have done better? And it allows you to, again, take initiative and at the same time, show that you are constantly thinking of improvement and how you can better yourself and prepare for these roles. And following that, the next tip is get cross-functional. Now, my definition for being cross-functional is the ability to step out of your assigned roles and responsibilities and assist in other departments and other projects while working towards a common goal. There's a reason that they say knowledge is power because if you can become cross-functional in your job, in your company, in your organization, whatever it is, this enables you to do more. You are adding more value physically and you are creating more value to others because you are maybe you are alleviating their stress their burdens of some of their projects the more you know the more you can do and that is super important and super valuable here's my question to you guys so make sure you comment below how do you see others around you getting cross-functional and how does it improve your work and also be sure if you're enjoying this video that you drop a like down below the next tip is to build a good rapport and relationship with the other departments and coworkers. And so pairing it with the previous tip, if you have to get cross-functional, who do you have to work with? The other departments and the other coworkers. And if you're able to build these positive relationships with others, it's a fantastic skill to have, but then also it's a huge asset for you in aiming for leadership because it's one of those things that I stress is a net positive outcome. It only positively impacts everyone involved. And so this, again, comes back to networking. And so networking doesn't have to be anything scary or anything abstract. It really is just that process of building a positive and impactful relationship and connection with others. Next, one of my most helpful tips is get to know your leads and be the solution to various problems. So now that you've become cross-functional, now that you've built good rapport and good partnerships with the other departments and other team members, you have to make sure you're doing that also with your lead because you can become their go-to for questions, for assistance, and again, show and demonstrate your ability to lead and to take on and do more. And this is my opinion, but one of the biggest things that they look for in leaders is the ability to add and increase value anywhere they are placed. And the more that you show that you are a creative problem solver, you are a good problem solver, the more they're gonna to look to you for these opportunities and these chances to prove that and to demonstrate your abilities. Okay, so I may have lied a little bit earlier. This is probably the second most important thing that you can do, but it's pretty high up there with the asking your boss. Know how much you can handle while still maintaining your personal health and your current responsibilities. So make sure you're not just going out of your way to take on too much work just to impress people around you because that is a fantastic recipe for burnout. All right, so I got to 
finish up the accounting, I will make sure that presentation is done by today. I gotta send out a couple of emails. Uh, I know I have a couple of phone meetings to go to and I will also get you that expense spreadsheet by tomorrow. Hey, so I also have to make sure that my dog gets picked up from dog care. Think you can handle that? Oh, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. I, I got that, yeah. It's important that you still maintain a good work ethic for your own responsibilities and your own department as well. So while you wanna take on more, it's admirable and it's important that you do, but do it within reason. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed just by running forward to this opportunity. And all these tips come together to really focus on making sure that you can do more. And while you work to build relationships, while you work to experience new things and learn new skills, you're gaining a wider perspective by seeing how the departments work together, how one department's work impacts another while showing your lead that you are not only being able to communicate well, you are also able to do good work in not only your department, but in other areas too. And this all, again, is super important because it shows initiative. It shows that you are eager, you are pushing forward, and it improves your chances of consideration when these roles and opportunities, again, come up. And actions will always speak louder than words. So be intentional, work smarter, not just harder. And I know these opportunities will come when they're ready. And talking about leadership and management, I actually have another video where I compare and contrast both skills and show how important they are, as well as how to utilize both skill sets as needed. So feel free to check that one out too. And with that, thank you so much for taking time every day to watch this video. I greatly appreciate it. And if you appreciated this video, found it fun and informative, be sure to drop a like so YouTube can recommend it to others like you. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It helps me out so, so much. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at KES Studios. And I hope you have a phenomenal day. Keeping everything simple. I'll see you on another video.